Lord, if this was a career, it stopped being a career a long time ago. I'm a teaching pastor in one of the most influential churches in the world. Had the most stunning house in Australia. Ten minutes from our main campus that you'll see on TV if you watch Hillsong, where our albums are recorded that have gone around the world by the tens of millions. I have two daughters, a seven-year-old and an 11-year-old. Love this school in Australia. 75-year-old mother who was in hospital and we nearly lost her and I was here. Nick's 86-year-old mother with dementia. Every day, we don't know if she's going to make it or not, literally. I don't need to be here. I don't need to be standing here on a Sunday night in Jacksonville, Florida for my own ego or for my own career. But it's a labor of love. It's a labor because God has called me to continue to do the good works that he put me on the earth to do. It costs a labor, a labor to labor. I don't know what makes you think any of us standing here should be paying any more a price than anyone standing there. We're held more accountable for what we say, but we're all part of the body of Christ and we all are co-workers with Christ and we're all called to labor in the harvest field and we're all called to do what he's called us to do. And it costs everyone. It costs everyone. The minute you build a Christianity around your own comfort, your own convenience, this is as far as I'll go, God. I don't want to labor anymore. I've enjoyed building this much of the church, Lord, but you know what? I like my life now. Got my kids, got my husband, got a pretty good career. I could just write a book a year, do one or two traveling tours, and the whole world will think I'm awesome. But God, you know that I've stopped laboring. You know that I've really stopped turning up for work. You know that I've really given you the conditions that I'll work with. And I've lost that spirit that just says, I'm here at six o'clock in the morning. What do you want me to do? Oh, okay. Go to Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. Go to Montreal, Canada. Okay. I've just turned up for work. You can use me for a lot more specialized work now, God, because my skill level's increased, but I'm still just a laborer working in your harvest. And while there's still breath in my lungs, while my heart's still beating, while blood's still pumping through my arteries and veins, I'll still do the thing that you've called me to do. And it doesn't matter if it's a Sunday night crowd in the back of Jacksonville, Florida, or if it's some other crowd, or if it's in the back of Greece in an A21 shelter, or if it's my husband right now in Thailand opening another office, whatever it is, God, while there's still breath in our lungs, we are going to continue to be laborers in your harvest field because there's nothing greater than working in the kingdom of God. We're all called to labor. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, what does it tell us? It tells us that we are co-workers in God's service. You and I are co-workers in the service of God. Co-laborers with Christ. I don't know if that means anything to you. God Himself, the God who created this earth, the God who formed me says, guess what, Chris? You can now co-labour with me in this part of the mission. And this part of the mission until I return is to go about doing good is to go about seeking and saving that which is lost, to train and equip my body to do works of service, not out of guilt, not out of condemnation, not out of selfish ambition, not out of striving, but to understand that if you are born again, then your heart beats for what God's heart beats for. And God's heart beats for a lost and a broken world. And He says, would you partner with me to do those good works? then it changes how we serve a church. It changes how we give our money. It changes how we prioritise everything because we are co-labourers with God. I don't want to be a hero in my own field. I'd rather be a labourer with Him. With Him. And guess what? He's done all the heavy lifting 2,000 years ago. So I get, and I love Pastor Kerry talks about the rhythms of grace. You wonder how at 47 I've still got this much energy. It's not because I'm anything great. I look after myself, but that's about it. But it's because His yoke is easy and His burden is light. And I'm not off trying to chase anything of myself. I'm not trying to build anything that God doesn't want me to co-labor with Him. When you're trying to build your own tower 
on your own, it's exhausting. When you're co-working with Him, you love it. You love it. You go, I get to co-labor with God. How awesome to build the kingdom of God in His harvest field. What greater job could there be? You couldn't offer me to be a CEO of a Fortune 500 company and me think it's any better, but it would be awesome if the CEO of a Fortune 500 company saw that as an opportunity to labour in the harvest field. Oh, it would start to change everything. And we could potentially be the generation that would usher in the second coming of Christ if we actually understood that the whole earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, everything in it and every person. And wherever we are placed, we are called to co-labour with Him, not to strive in the flesh. See, I think the issue is, let me wrap this up. The issue is that um, most of us don't value, don't value being a co-laborer with Christ. We'd rather be the supervisor. We'd rather be the viewer, the commentator. We, we don't, we don't want to be the laborers. We'd we'd rather set up boundaries. God, this is how much I'll give you. Because of course, God, you want me to have a balanced life. And if it's inconvenient, if it's uncomfortable, if it doesn't have a remote control, if it doesn't have an app, you possibly would not want me to do that. I I called this message, I forgot to tell you right from the outset, I called it, um, no one ever drowned in sweat. Thank you, United States Marine Corps. No one ever drowned in sweat. I think part of the challenge of our generation is most people want to feel special. They don't want to be useful. And if we don't make you feel special enough at church, you're not going to serve. But a laborer just wants to be useful. They're not looking to be special. And God says, wow, do you think your co-laborer is special? Would you be a co-worker with me? Would you know every time you turn up in the nursery, every time you come to sisterhood, every time you serve in the men's ministry, every time you serve in the youth ministry, every time you come up here and you serve with the worship, did you, do you know you're a co-laborer with me? You're not doing this alone. Every time you serve in the parking lot, every time you do a hospital visitation, every time you take a meal to a neighbour, every time you give a kind word, you're co-laboring with Christ. What an awesome co-worker. Think of your greatest co-worker doesn't even come close. See, labourers are not celebrities, they're labourers. Labourers are not heroes, they're labourers. We don't wanna be labourers, we wanna be celebrities, we wanna be heroes. We want a position, we want a title, we want accolades, we want achievements, we want goals, we want plans, we want strategies. And God says, I'm just looking for co-labourers. Oh, I'll take you further than you ever thought. We love to quote our Scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Ephesians 3.20. Look, I'm the queen of preaching all of those. But it's God that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that ever uh, I could ever. You know what? I've almost stopped asking, hoping and thinking because I'm like, God, you're going to blow me away anyway. I'm just going to turn up for work and you'll just blow me away. And I can tell you the honest truth. People look at my life and go, how? How? And it's a God wonder. It's a God wonder. Because I've said, God, I all I want to be is a labourer. I couldn't think of a higher privilege than co-laboring with you. The God of the universe, I get to co-labor with you. Why would I think anything that I could do would be any better than that? You know, the truth is, laborers participate, they don't spectate. But most of us, we prefer to spectate at a Christian event rather than participate in advancing the kingdom of God. And God says, church, We've got to move beyond just doing church and we've got to start being the church. We don't just come to watch an event. We labour together to do it. 